learned how much they love me. And that's really important because the demonstration, uh, and when you're in a family, the, your mother represents Holy Spirit, and the Father represents Father God. And Jesus is are like your siblings and your best friends. And sometimes I, I understand that they, they correlate, and um, I just want to talk about that. But I believe that in heaven, God, you know, he has a big house, and he has a huge picture frame. Um, I go on encounters with the Lord, just kind of what I had you do earlier. Did you guys like that when we had you close your eyes? Has you, have you ever done that before? Go on an encounter with God? Raise your hand if you've gone on an encounter with God before. Yeah. Well, God wants you to go on those encounters with Him every, every day if you want. Because He's really present in your lives. And it says in Ephesians, we are seated in heavenly places. Um, but God has a big picture frame in His house. And each one of you are in it. And you all belong in this family. And so I just uh, want to show you that picture. But uh, this parable is one of my favorites. Um, and it's about um, Jesus is just talking to us about how much he loves us and pursues us. He is always in pursuit of our hearts. And so I'm going to read this. It's a parable of the lost coin. I'm sure you all know it. Okay. Um, and I'm going to specifically talk about... Okay, I'm just going to read it. Luke um, 15, 8. Or what woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me! Rejoice with me! Rejoice with me! For I have found the coin I lost. <laughs> in the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels or one sinner who repents. And so when we're in the family, because some people aren't in the family. They're really not. Do you, how many of you have a friend who doesn't know Jesus? Yeah, I have a lot of them. But that doesn't stop me from hanging out with them. No, that I pursue them and pursue um, just want to be with them even more to tell them about Jesus and um, God not only pursues you because I mean just like a coin like coins coins are worth value but how much more is a person's value so much like Jesus died he hung on that cross just for one person to want one single person and so he wants you to know that even if, like, you only see yourself as the worth of a, a penny, I have a penny. I don't know if you guys know. It's like a one cent in America. It's really not worth much. But I love pennies, and I'm going to tell you a little story about my testimony. But Jesus is like, okay, if I lose this penny, I'm going to search. I'm going to search. And I know some of you don't feel that you're very valuable to God, but today's going to reveal to you how valuable you are to Him. Everyone say, I am valuable to God. I'm valuable to God. Yeah. It's really important because when we understand that, we get to realize and understand who we are and our destiny. And we become who we think we are. And a lot of the time, we become who the most important person in our life says we are. And a lot of the time, those, those, the most important people in our lives are our fathers and mothers. And I understand. Um, that a lot of you might not have fathers and mothers. But I want to challenge you to position yourself to be fathered by Father God. And the Holy because that's what Father does. He's like, I, I, I'm there to uh, I give you your identity. I'm there to protect you and to provide for you. And God says, I am faithful. I'm always faithful. And if He says this, that He's going to do that, I, I want to challenge you to believe that. And the Holy Spirit is there to just give us wisdom and revelation and there to understand us and give us counsel, a lot of aspects of what a, a mother does. Um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. I'm, I'm very real with people. I don't believe in fakeness. I don't, I don't like that. I like people being real. Everyone say real. real. Yeah, let's just keep it real today um, because we're friends and a part of a family. And when we're in, when we're in the family... Um, we want to be real and honest with each other. Um, and so when I was growing up, my parents my parents got a divorce when I was five years old. Um, I was the oldest, 
and I have two younger sisters, but I was very confused, um, like what was going on. My parents, my, my mom would just, I, my first memories are my dad saying, I can't be with you anymore, I have to go, I have to leave. Um, and I didn't understand, I blamed myself. I was like, why, why is my dad leaving me? What did I do? Why am I not good enough for him? Why, why would he choose to leave me? And, and from that, that day forth, it, my, I didn't understand the value. And I just remember my mom, my second memory is just my mom crying, clinging to me. Just, and it's just so broken. And so from that, that day forth, I just, I was like, what's life about? Like, if family's not going to be there for you. Um, and so my parents both um, got married uh, again. Um, my mom got married to this guy. He, God's done so much restoration in my life, just so much. But I'm going to be real with you. She, their marriage was not very happy. It wasn't, they were, but never felt safe. Um, he was very verbally abusive. I don't know what, if you guys know what that is, but it's just because I'm so valuable, because we're so valuable, words matter to us. And, and there, it, it, it just does. And I want you to be careful because your words are, like I said, really powerful and they matter and they create things. Like that's why I did declarations because I believe what I say is powerful and what you say is powerful. So I want you to watch what you say to people. But, um, my, my dad also got remarried, and I loved my, my dad and my stepmom, but however, my, my dad ended up dying when I was 14. He had a disease, um, hepatitis C, and it's being called chemochromatosis, but it was because he drank a lot because he wasn't very happy. He had a lot of broken things in his heart. Um, his parents both died when he was like 10, and he just didn't know how to be a son. And you guys... That is the greatest thing we can be, our sons and daughters. That's what we're meant to do. We're meant to be loved and to be sons and daughters. Because eventually we're going to grow up and be mothers and fathers. And I believe the, the vessel, the strongest vessel that love can flow through is through that of a family and through that of a mother and father. And, and through that of a son and a daughter. Um, but back to my story. Um, when my dad died, I was out of school for a week. I ne it was never okay to cry. How many of you, like, would feel pretty sad if your dad died? I mean, I was devastated. I was 14, and I just needed a father. Um, and after that, I was back in school, and I, I was had a lot of anger inside and a lot of just confusion because no one said that it was okay to cry or to be angry or upset.